Hi there, I'm Dan Smith. I'm a WCA delegate from Kansas and the United States. And I've been dealing with some G5 timer issues here the last few months. So I've been a delegate uh, since, I mean, I became a trainee delegate in February of 2022. I became um, a junior delegate in May 2022, and I got all my equipment in April. So my equipment I take to competitions about once a month and I generally travel, so half my uh, third third of my competitions are local in, here in Kansas, and then I'll travel 300 miles or so to other competitions where I, I uh, delegate. So um, I had no issues for any competitions from uh, April, April, May, from May of 2022, that was the first time, until October. So about one a month, except for September. I didn't do September. Um, and then in November in Omaha, Corn Husker Cuban Classic 2022, had several timer resets. Um, never had seen before, never happened at home. I'd only heard about it sporadically in reports. Uh, and everybody thinks it's bad equipment. <clears throat> um, came back, reset. Uh, changed all the batteries out and in December 2022 so last month same thing happened again in Andover Kansas at Kansas FMC and Sidekicks 2022 so in all cases it was uh, drier and cold and um, all of the timer resets happened at stations were in high traffic areas so either in the front or to the sides. If it was in the back um, or in a middle row, if you had multiple rows, middle row, or, or people didn't <clears throat> uh, pass by a lot. So those didn't happen. But where the, the public is coming around the side or you ask folks to come up to the staging area, then that, that was the issue. So that was the stuff I was dealing with. Now, if it's equipment issues, I'm fine with that. The problem is, I don't like that people drive three, four, 500 miles, several hundred kilometers, whatever, and they come to a competition and they're, they're um, uh, the recording their kid and there's either a timer reset on a PV, potential PV, um, or they just can't have the displays on. So that was the other thing uh, for Kansas FMC Sidekicks. Um, after several resets, we just unplugged the displays and the cords. Okay, so here's some issues that I was thinking it could have been. Uh, is it slamming the timer? So doing this. Um, we did about 200 solves here at home, no resets. Um, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm slamming these hard, much more than you see at a competition. Is it dead batteries? It could be dead batteries, but it's tough to test for dead batteries, and I'm changing my batteries out every four or five competitions. And I found that uh, when when displays go bad, they just go bad. They just fade out to nothing. When the display when the timers go bad, they may come back and reset. But you kind of know that the batteries are going. Oh yeah, I've used these five competitions, so I'm going to change out the batteries. Um, is it the cold? The problem here is when I travel to a competition, I don't leave my stuff in the vehicle overnight. I always take it into the hotel room. So there's two reasons for that. Um, I've been dealing with electronics for many, many, many years. I don't like having to deal with cold electronics. Uh, the old CRT monitors from back in the day, those would take a long time to warm up. Uh, computers, laptops, you just don't like them to be cold. Uh, also, when they warm up, sometimes you get condensation. So I've always just learned when I go on a trip with electronics to take the electronics into the hotel room. The other thing is I have couple of grand of equipment, a couple of thousand dollars worth of equipment, and I don't want to uh, have a chance of anything stolen. So is it shaking due to, to a road trip? That's another thing I thought of. So I uh, last week, I packed all of my equipment up, 12 stations, uh, complete with everything, uh, put everything in the bag, and I loaded it up into my vehicle and then drove for over an hour. So back roads, side roads, highway, 
uh, hard turns, hard braking, hard starts, stops, uh, came back in, set up four stations, um, three of which I knew were finicky from the last competition and nothing happened. So that was very frustrating. Um, I've also known, um, talking to, to the gear team, that uh, they just tell folks, hey, wintertime, it's static, it's drier. Um, so we're kind of ge gearing towards static, but how to reproduce that. Okay, and the, and the final thing here is I've had a couple of these stations now for over two years. I bought some personal equipment and I do competitions at home, online competitions for the Senior Coopers Worldwide um, folks. And I've been in the 100, over a hundred competitions have not had a single reset here at home. And, you know, maybe I baby my stuff a little bit. I put everything up, uh, but I should have had one reset over all that time, right? Nothing. So um, this has been a tough issue to debug, but I'm going to show you using this device. I believe it's static electricity. electricity. So, um, when we came down to thinking it was static or trying to eliminate static as a variable. Um, the other night we got some balloons, rubbed our head, touched the clamp display or anything, nothing. The problem is once you touch something, all the static electricity shoots out. The other thing was socks on a carpet, go up and touch somebody, pop. Um, so the last few days, it's not been super dry here. It's been cold, but not super dry. So this will simulate small charges of electricity. It's a TENS device. It is um, uh, sort of a muscle stimulant. And uh, my wife uses it. She has various aches and pains. I got it from the uh, dentist once when I got lockjaw after a procedure. My mouth was open and uh, whatever. And my I got lockjaw. So... I use that to stimulate it. And all it does is yeah, just little charges. So yeah, pretty strong. So you'll see I'll use this TENS device on this equipment and you'll see that a stack charges causes resets. So see it here soon. Okay, so I have an experiment here where I have two stations set up, timer, cord, stack mat, uh, mat, and a standard display. The difference here is I have a standard speed stacks clamp, comes from the factory, and then this is a custom clamp. This is a, uh, a grip clamp from Amazon, and then I have some, uh, I have a welder friend who, uh, we, we cut these, these uh, square tubes, and then there's plastic caps. Uh, and in both cases, the cord goes from the timer underneath the table, wraps around the clamp, and goes on the display. Um, the reason the displays are on the table is I want to show you that touching the display doesn't do anything. Um, we've also shown that slamming the timer doesn't do anything. So I'm going to do two resets here. This one was already reset, so I'm going to get it going. Okay, so let's get that one going. Okay, so we have a, uh, we have uh, two times going. Okay, so I have found, I watch this won't work now, but if I'm able to just, it reset. And all it did was apply this to the clamp. Okay, we're going to go to the standard clamp. So let's just eliminate this issue here. Um, they reset. Okay. So I didn't touch the display. I didn't touch the cord. I didn't touch the timer. I didn't slam the timer. I didn't slam the display. The batteries are good. The only thing here is... Um, uh, what we think is the electricity is going down the clamp and because this cord is wrapped around uh, circularly uh, and it's an induction coil. 
So what happens is that I, I we have to talk to an electronics expert, but this gives feedback to the timer and it can't handle it, so it resets. Sure enough, I'll show you, both of these timers are now in four pad mode. Okay. Okay, so I realize I probably should have done this again, uh, replicate it. So all I did was restart the thing again. Now, this may not happen every single time. <laughs> See what happened there? Okay, so what happens sometimes is um, the timer, the display, the, the timer gets so um, jacked up from the reset that it doesn't know what to do. Okay, so let me go back. So that reset, it's in four pan mode. So let's try to get a reset here. Oh, this is interesting. It's still going and it reset the display. The display is still going here. So let's, I'm having a problem here because, yeah, so now I can't reset that, I can't reset that. Oh, and as soon as I touched it, it went into four pad mode. Okay, so I'll try to do this again. Um, so is this reset, resetting this? They both went into four pad mode. I don't know what's going on over here. But it could be that the signal, the static, is coming all the way over here and resetting this too. Oh, see that turned off. And then, we're in four pad mode. So, I've shown you several examples, and all I've done is just use this TENS device. Now, it is on the highest setting, but um, the, the issue that I'm seeing is that in high traffic areas, somebody will come by and touch the timer. So if this setup is on the end, then they'll come around to go to the staging area and they may touch the clamp. The judge may touch the clamp. So, all right, now I'm going to try to set this up where I have a fix. So I think I know a fix here. Okay, so um, what I've done is unwrap the cords and I've tied them up in my, a couple of my wife's hair ties. Uh, I don't find this to be an optimal solution, but what I'm trying to show is I got the slack up 
and I'm not wrapping around the the uh, clamp. So same here. Um, I would probably find a way to tape these under the table or something. I just don't like those being in the way. Uh, but there's no way that the cord itself is wrapped uh, around the display. So I have a couple of times going here. So now I'm just going to see if I can. Now the problem here is How long do I do this before I decide that it, it's a fix? Because <clears throat> what I found is even with the cord wrapped around, it still doesn't do this all the time. There's nothing here. Now, watch as I, yeah, I'm even, I'm even going to put this inside the display. I mean, it's going. So there's nothing. So I'm also going to let's let's <clears throat> so it looks like this is a a decent solution here. So again, we recommend I recommend not wrapping the cords around the clamp, tying them up. Um, <clears throat> maybe in this case, wrap around the handle. That might that might fix it. But showing that static discharge on the on the timer display or even the cord itself doesn't do anything. It's that unique situation where the cord is wrapped around the display. So, hope that helps. I know it's very frustrating for a lot of delegates and organizers to have this happen. Now, uh, one thing I've also seen is if we reset way too much, uh, the, the display gets, I'm sorry, the timer just gets so bonked out that you have to take the batteries out. There's no way to reset it. But the batteries are still good. 